We do want to get the latest on the Israel-Hamas war. For that, joining us uh, is Major Jerome Spielman of the IDF. And uh, Major, we appreciate your time today. We want to start off by uh, discussing the UN Secretary General recently uh, declaring that nowhere in Gaza is safe for civilians and the situation is, quote, a spiraling humanitarian nightmare. The BBC also reporting that a senior UN aid official was warned that half of Gaza's population is starving. What are you able to see on the ground? So I was in the in the Gaza Strip a short time ago, and as we've seen since from the very beginning when Hamas launched the attack on October 7th, the situation on Gaza is not a great situation. No one uh, would want to put themselves in that situation, and my heart goes out to those people. I see them standing in lines for food. By the way, they are now shouting against Hamas in Arabic, which uh, is actually a breakthrough. They understand that Hamas is behind this, and they're right, because the situation in the Gaza Strip is due to Hamas. My answer to this UN representative, and there are many of them out there, and I don't know where they have that, out, that uh, information from, because there is food and water entering the Strip. The, the situation is, if Hamas was not everywhere in the Gaza Strip, it would be much easier. The more that we move forward and we're able to reduce Hamas, those areas where they are reduced, such as the humanitarian zone, when they don't go in there and shoot rockets, have more food. The key again, we are not looking, our war is not with the people of Gaza, it's with Hamas. Less Hamas means a better life for the people of Gaza. Now, uh, Major, this uh, per Reuters, the Israeli military struck more than 450 targets in Gaza from land, sea, and air uh, over the past 24-hour period. Uh, they say that that's the most since the temporary ceasefire ended. What's caused this ramp up in activity? I can tell you, Austin, we're making uh, enormous progress. You know, we are, uh, we see Hamas as the absolute enemy of the state of Israel right now. We cannot live with them on our borders. Therefore, they have to be destroyed. And our forces are inside Gaza. And I was with our forces, and they are committed and dedicated. And what you're seeing the result of is more intelligence that we're gathering. You had Hamas terrorists that have given themselves up to us in the last 24 hours. Many of them have been interrogated, and that's providing critical intelligence. We're moving forward on Hamas. And what those interrogations show and this is connected to the large volume of our uh, strikes on, uh, in, on Hamas, is that they are starting to crumble. They state, and I quote, we've heard this from multiple interrogations, that the leadership of Hamas is disconnected from reality, and they don't realize that Hamas is collapsing. The line of communication between battalion commanders and troops in the field is being severely reduced, and the fighters themselves are reporting that amongst the terrorists of, of Hamas, they themselves realize that Hamas does not care about the civilians above ground. What we are seeing, including the ones that are resurrendering, including this chatter, including publicly speaking of, against Hamas in the food lines, is a slow disintegration of that Hamas regime. And we're here to accelerate it. And those strikes are here to accelerate it. Major, we have uh, this post from about six hours ago we're going to show on the screen. This is the Israeli Air Force Twitter account showing a series of strikes, including a mosque in Han Yunus. What were the targets of these attacks? The mosque in Han Yunus is uh, actually a perfect example, Austin, of what's taking place. Uh, we are not out to hit mosques. We're not out to hit dead hospitals and certainly not schools. What you've seen in the last 24 hours is typical Hamas. As our troops were in the Palestine Square, which is the largest square in the middle of Khan Yunus, and the Hamas headquarters, not far away, there's a mosque. Uh, terrorists were in that mosque shooting at Israeli troops. A number of them were eliminated. They then began shooting anti-tank missiles from the roof out of the mosque, at which point, of course, what you're seeing on the screen is aerial support, which is removing those terrorists. Obviously, the terrorists put the mosque in harm's way. And that's why it was destroyed. Again, this is supposed to be their holy place. This is supposed to be a place that you go like a synagogue and a church and a mosque to pray to God. Instead, they're cynically using it to try to kill people knowing that they're putting that place at risk. Also, UNESCO schools, UNRWA schools. We just saw weapons stored inside UNRWA schools, shooting at us from UNRWA schools. A lot of this information we've released. These are the, the key examples of how Hamas is using 
these civilian targets that no one would want to use in their right mind, they're using it in order to, as camouflage to strike Israeli soldiers. We are now over a week removed from that temporary ceasefire that allowed the swap of hostages uh, in exchange for Palestinian prisoners, uh, as well as humanitarian aid, uh, which appears to be, as we discussed, a pretty big need right now. Where do discussions stand with mediators like Qatar and Egypt right now? And is there any possibility that we could see another pause in the immediate future? Look, from the IDF's perspective, we are a flexible army. We have the flexibility to move into that type of format if a discussion, which takes place on the political level uh, and has been into, it, it, the intermediaries have been Egypt, the United States, and Qatar, we have the flexibility to, to move into that posture. I can tell you on the ground, those are not the messages that we're getting right now. The messages we're getting right now is eliminate Hamas, they're starting to crumble. We need to keep up with this momentum and bring them to ultimate destruction. And therefore, from a military perspective, that's where we're focused and that's where we're making progress. Obviously, we want our hostages to come home. Hamas just released the video and it's being verified by us where one of our hostages that was taken alive, was seen alive in the Gaza Strip, is now dead. Now, Hamas puts out, as they always do, psychological warfare, saying that they were he was killed by an Israeli strike. What we know is Hamas is responsible for his life. So the situation of the hostages is dire, but we are making a lot of progress on the ground. And we always believe that the progress on the ground, Austin, is the greatest chance for us to free those hostages ultimately. Hamas will only do it when they have no choice because they're under pressure. For over a week, the IDF has dropped leaflets, distributed evacuation maps. Uh, they've warned Gazans repeatedly to move away from strike zones. Um, now that we've had some time to examine civilian behavior on the ground during these times, um, have you found that many civilians actually got the message or heeded the message and moved to safer territory? Absolutely. Uh, it's without a doubt. We also know because we're monitoring the website, the number of entries into the website is vast. Gazans are logging into the website. They are taking count of where those numbered regions are, they're moving out of the way. We also today had a humanitarian pause in the Gaza Strip. The notifications are working and we've managed, I think it's gonna be a first in urban warfare, managing to move such a large population out of the war zone. Now, it's not perfect. And I don't wanna say that, that it's perfect or that there's not mistakes on our side. This is a war, this is not a perfect scenario. But in general, I believe there's never been another army in history also that has had more concern over the civilian population of the army that they're fighting. I mean, it, it's hard to grasp, but it is working and we're constantly improving and we've made more than one humanitarian zone. One issue we are facing is today and yesterday, four rockets were fired by Hamas from within the Al-Mawasi humanitarian zone. And it puts the people there at risk and it really uh, it just puts more threats on the Gazan civilian population, and as always, we're calling on the world, stop pointing the finger always at Israel. Call Hamas, make them responsible for their actions. That's the only way to help Israel and the people of Gaza. We do know that a number of people perhaps see those messages to move out of the way, but then they choose to stay. Um, what are some of the reasons you guys hear that people choose to stay, despite the fact that there's going to be military action imminent? Look, it's something we faced also in the North, even though the vast majority did leave, there were some that stayed. From our assessments, you know, when they stay, by the way, we speak to them directly. You know, bullhorns, we call on them. Some people just do not want to leave their homes for whatever reason, and I can understand that this is their home. They don't want to leave. Others are being held there by Hamas. They have relatives that are in Hamas, and they feel like their lives are threatened. And, and others, you, you know, just have various reasons that are, are difficult to reason with. What we say to them is, if you choose life, if you want to live, we are here to help you. This is a humanitarian corridor. We're letting you know to leave. If you stay, you're putting yourself at enormous risk. And anyone who chooses to stay, it, they're just not choosing life. They're, they're choosing the fate of Hamas, uh, which Hamas unfortunately put them in the situation. But we're constantly calling on them and we're hoping 100% will move out of the way. Obviously, Hamas doesn't want that to happen, but in general, it is working. And uh, Major, we do want to end on this. So this is a tweet sent out by the Israeli Air Force saying, 
Uh, last night, on the second night of Hanukkah, while families across Israel were celebrating the Jewish festival of lights, heavy rocket barrages lit up the sky, forcing millions of Israelis across the entire country to run for shelter. What are we looking at here? And are these rockets being intercepted? What area did they appear to be targeting? What can you tell us about these images? That is a barrage uh, that, that interestingly, or sadly enough, I was in Gaza when, when those rockets flew over my head. Uh, just to give some context, I had just lit a menorah with soldiers in Gaza that are engaging Hamas. And at the same time, the rockets are heading over our heads towards Tel Aviv. Those were 10 rockets that were fired directly towards Israel's most dense civilian population. Again, if we had not invested all of our tax dollars, Austin, in the Iron Dome, you're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of people that could die from these types of rocket barrages. Thank God, these, what you're looking at are interceptions. A few of them landed in the sea and no one was hurt. And again, the reason is not because Hamas isn't trying to kill civilians, but because we're trying to protect our own civilians. If they only had had that mindset for the last 16 years, Gaza could have been a paradise for the Gazan people, but they didn't. And that's one of the other reasons why they simply have to go. Major Jerome Spielman with the IDF. We appreciate your time.